Dajah Hao. Uh, welcome to another uh, little talk from me, Barry, of Best China Info. And I'm going to start with uh, somebody who's been very in the news in the West. And she's known as AOC, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez. Now, this, this is a, a politician for the Democrats who has come to some, some fame and, and, uh, and uh, held in quite a lot of esteem by minorities, people of color in America, um, because she is, seems to be and puts herself forward as a champion of minority issues and human rights and civil liberties. And she came to my attention first. A little while ago, she, she did a, there was a public hearing with, with Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook. And AOC, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, wiped Mark Zuckerberg out publicly. She wiped the floor with him. And it was quite entertaining to watch. She was very eloquent and very knowledgeable, and she was very commanding. And Mark Zuckerberg looked like an idiot in her presence, under fire from her. And the point of that was something to do with Facebook not checking and not fact-checking um, and not policing political content on Facebook. And as I say, I, I, she came to my attention to doing this. And I, was, I held her in some admiration because she was so commanding and so sure of herself. Um, and as I say, Zuckerberg looked like an idiot and was held up to account, held to account for Facebook being at fault, for not policing things properly, for being, it seems, biased in certain directions. Now, since then, very recently, um, AOC has uh, released a very public video via the Guardian newspaper, in which she uh, publicly states how she and various other senators, members of the House in the Capitol building, were very close to being assassinated. Now, these are her words. She said, uh, we were very nearly assassinated. I was in fear of my life. This is very strong words and very definite accusations, very definite allegations of the riotous... Uh, goings on in the Capitol building. But I, I immediately questioned this because it appeared to me that she was giving a performance. And the performance was that of a little girl, a little girl performance. I was in fear of my life. We were very nearly assassinated. And, and I asked this question, what does very nearly assassinated actually mean? Um, because she didn't make any firm uh, give any evidence. She just made this allegation. So I, I think, well, what does nearly assassinated mean? Does it mean we were somebody shot at us but missed? Does it mean uh, somebody tried to stab me but the knife missed or bounced off? Does it mean someone tried to strangle me but they didn't succeed? What does nearly assassinated mean in this instance? Again, no proof, no facts, just uh, her personal statement, a witness statement, if you like, of this near assassination of many, <laughs> many uh, senators. Now, I, I don't swing on one side or the other here. Democrat, Republican, it makes no difference to me whatsoever, because to me, as a Westerner, it is all a show. Now, I've lived in the West, America, Australia, the UK, for many years all my life, and, and I have come to realize that it is a show, it is um, a circus, it is theatrical, and the politics of the West is all, um, it's all presented this way, especially in America, there is this show, and this is basically propaganda. It's designed, and very, very carefully designed, to play on people's emotions. Now, there's a difference here between, I see, between the way China does things and the way the West does things, particularly America. And that is when I see a politician, a spokesperson for the Chinese government speaking, they're very matter of fact, very, but well, this is what it is. Here's the fact. There's no emotion. There's no uh, trying to play on emotion. It's just delivered 
as in, in a matter-of-fact way, the points, the facts, the truth of things. It's not very glossy, it's not particularly entertaining, but it's not meant to be entertaining. And here's the big difference. Um, China isn't trying to do this. Um, and I noticed that, that I heard recently that uh, President Xi wants particularly, there's a drive to appeal to um, especially younger people in China um, to, to engage them, to, I, I personally think that, that young people are very proud of China and their country. I feel this because I teach in a university and, and I know, I can feel the pride they have in China. But I know there's a, there's a, there's a concerted effort to engage young people in China. And I think this stems from the troubles that China had in Hong Kong, where there has been a generation of younger people who have been miseducated and misdirected and um, indoctrinated in a completely wrong way of thinking. And I'm, I'm aware that China is wary of this happening again. I don't think it will happen. And I understand why China wants to be, to be proactive in generating a good feeling among young people for their country. Now, the problem is that China is not very well practiced at this. China is not very well practiced at this because it doesn't need to be. It's never needed to be because the people and the government is one thing, the beehive. So um, China does need to look at this because the kids today, <coughs> excuse me, kids are, they're used to Hollywood. They're used to this gloss, to this slickness of things, to shine, to appearance, to production. They're used to this way of things. They've seen Marvel movies, for God's sake, which are the slickest of them all. Um, Tony Stark, all this stuff, you know. Avatar, they've seen this quality of production and they're used to this. There is an expectation among Chinese youth, young people in China. They, they have an expectation. Uh, there's a standard, which I think that maybe China needs to look at this situation and, and think, well, well, we need to, because it's about engaging people, especially young people, they need to be engaged and they need to feel that, that somebody isn't trying to give them a load of bull that they instantly ignore. So, so there has to be a lot of thought put into this situation, into this, um, into this engagement. So uh, here's where she's accusing Zuckerberg of Facebook of having responsibility for the capital rights. So she's not only accused <laughs> Trump, she's now accusing Zuckerberg, saying that partial blame for Facebook for last week's riots. And now, talking about her funding and her money, okay? Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, New York District 14, expenditure 2019 to 2020, the election cycle, okay? Now, here's what she spent. Facebook, five million dollars to Facebook, 794 payments totaling five million dollars. So she's criticizing the hell out of Facebook about about election advertising, and she's spending this much money on Facebook. Hypocrite. Here she is again, this big re-election thing. She was in a safe seat, as they say, and she was guaranteed a win, but still she felt the need to, um, to raise lots of money. And she raised, uh, apparently, uh, 18 million. She raised 18 million. She spent more than 13 million, much of it on advertising. Um, her donations rely heavily on digital advertising and getting money from regular normal people who contribute they're small donators so the people who donate to her are, are, are people with not much money they're not rich people I mean, she gets a lot of money from small donations so yeah this aoc lady um i i, I can't believe her and the other thing is um how politics in the UK, in the US and the UK, how they work. They work with money. Um, you buy your way to 
success by paying for advertising. So it's this advertising, you're buying advertising to convince the public to choose you, to vote for you. So the whole system is rigged on who can pay the most money and all this money comes from where? This money comes from lobbies, lobby groups, Israel, especially Israel. And they buy the politicians by giving them money to campaign. And the, the, the politician gets elected, then they, they speak for the lobby groups who funded them. So it's rigged, it's a rigged game and it's all funded and it's all about money. It's got nothing to do with values. They keep giving this term values. So it's all bullshit, right? And I'm aware of this as a Westerner. I can see this and I've seen this all my life, this situation going on. It's a show. It's not real. It's democracy does not exist. It's bullshit, okay? In China, it's quite true. It's a beehive. We work together. Everybody knows their place and their role in this beehive. And they work together for the whole because it's one thing. It's one thing. It's not this in the West. It's like this. Never fits.